The Commonwealth of the Philippines was attacked by the Japanese Imperial Army on December 7, 1941 Nine hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Philippines is on the Asian side of the international date line. The United States of America controlled the Philippines at the time and possessed important military bases there. The combined American-Filipino army was defeated in the Battle of Bataan and the Battle of Corregidor in April 1942, but guerrilla resistance against the Japanese continued throughout the war. Uncaptured Filipino army units, a communist insurgency and supporting American agents all played a role in the resistance. Due to the huge number of islands, the Japanese never occupied many of the smaller and more minor islands. Japanese control over the countryside and smaller towns was often tenuous at best. In 1944, Allied forces liberated the islands from Japanese control in a naval invasion. Background in September 1940, Nazi Germany, Kingdom of Italy, and Empire of Japan had allied under the Tripartite Coalition as the Axis powers. The United States banned the shipment of aviation gasoline to Japan in July 1940, and by 1941 shipments of scrap iron, steel, gasoline and other materials had practically ceased. Meanwhile, American economic support to China began to increase. Japan and the USSR signed a neutrality pact in April 1941 and Japan increased pressure on the French and Dutch colonies in Southeast Asia to cooperate in economic matters. Japanese forces occupied the naval and air bases of southern French Indochina on the 22nd of July 1941. The Philippines was almost completely surrounded. General George C. Marshall, U.S. Army Chief of Staff, stated. Adequate reinforcements for the Philippines, at this time, would have left the United States in a position of great peril, should there be a break in the defense of Great Britain. A campaign for independence from the U.S. which had been ongoing since 1919 resulted on 17 January 1933 in the passage by the U.S. Congress of the Hare Haas Cutting Act over the veto of President Herbert Hoover. The law promised Philippine independence after 10 years, but reserved several military and naval bases for the United States, as well as imposing tariffs and quotas on Philippine exports. Philippine Senate President Manuel L. Quezon convinced the legislature to reject the bill. Subsequently, the Tidings McDuffie Act, which eliminated provisions for U.S. military reservations and substituted a provision for ultimate settlement became U.S. law on 24 March 1934 and was accepted by the Philippine Legislature on 1 May. The impact of this on the future defense of the Philippines with the establishment was to prove disastrous. During the 10-year transition period, the Philippine Constabulary was vested with an ever-increasing responsibility for defending the borders of the Philippines. The forces of the U.S. Army settled at around 10,000 men. The U.S. Army had, however, already spent millions constructing forts and airstrips throughout Luzon. This included the harbor defenses in Manila Bay, at Fort Mills on Corregidor Island and at Grande Island in Subic Bay. There were also bases at Nichols Air Station, now Villamore Air Base, Nielsen Air Base, now Makati City, Ayala and Bundia Avenues lay over the original landing strips, at Fort William McKinley, now Fort Andres Bonifacio and the American Cemetery, Camp Murphy, now Camp Aguinaldo and Camp Crane, in Quezon City, Camp O'Donnell in Tarlac and a series of airbases and army installations in Pampanga including Fort Stotzenberg, Clark Air Base, as well as Camp Wallace in La Union, the Naval Station in Sangley Point, Cavite City, Camp Keithley in Lanao, Camp Eldridge in Los Baños, Laguna and Camp Henry T. Allen in Baguio City. Other fields in Tugegarao, Apari, Isabela, Nueva Ecija, Legaspi, Bataan, and Del Monte in Davao were also built using U.S. funds prior to and during the first years of the 1935 Provisional Commonwealth. The Philippine Army the date for Philippine independence and U.S. military withdrawal was approaching, resulting in a reduction in funds from the U.S. military to directly support the expansion of the Philippine Commonwealth Army. Twelve million U.S. dollars were provided to the Commonwealth for the establishment of the Philippine Army in 1936. In the early years of the Commonwealth, the Philippine Army was composed of an active duty and a reserve component. 
The active duty component was the Philippine Constabulary, which was a paramilitary organization. After the outbreak of the war, this was referred to as the 1st Philippine Division. Many of the officers of the Philippine Army and Philippine Army Air Corps came from the members of the Philippine Constabulary and Air Constabulary. Far Eastern Command on 25 July 1941, U.S. Secretary of War Henry L. Stimson requested that U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt issue orders calling the military forces of the Commonwealth into active service for the United States. Stimson explained, All practical steps should be taken to increase the defensive strength of the Philippine Islands. The following day President Roosevelt froze all Japanese assets within the United States and issued orders to absorb the forces of the Philippine Army. That same day the War Department created the U.S. Army Forces in the Far East USAFFE Command, with jurisdiction over the Philippine Department and the military forces of the Commonwealth. At the same time, General Douglas MacArthur was recalled to active duty and designated the commander of the USAFFE. Naval forces At the outbreak of war the United States Navy's Asiatic Fleet was stationed at Cavite Naval Base in Manila Bay. Also stationed there was the Offshore Patrol. Mobilization and reinforcement MacArthur ordered the mobilization of the Philippine Army beginning on 1 September. Elements of 10 Filipino Reserve Divisions were to be called into the service of the United States Army by 15 December. Battalions were not organized by the time of the Japanese invasion in December. However, a force of 100,000 or more Filipinos was raised. On 14 August Brigadier General Leonard T. Giroux argued that the Philippine Department could not resist a Japanese attack. He thus recommended that the Philippines be reinforced with anti-aircraft artillery, modern aircraft and tanks. On 16 August, MacArthur was informed that by 5 September he could expect the 200th Coast Artillery Regiment AA, the 192nd and 194th Tank Battalions and a company of the 17th Ordnance Battalion. On 5 September Marshall asked MacArthur if he wanted a National Guard division, probably the 41st. MacArthur replied that he did not need any additional divisions. He also stated, equipment and supplies are essential. If these steps are taken, I am confident that no such backing, the development of a completely adequate defense force will be rapid. During September and October, in addition to the above-mentioned reinforcements, MacArthur received the 192nd Tank Battalion and 75 self-propelled 75mm guns. MacArthur strove to reorganize the Philippine Division from a square into a triangular formation. This plan involved shipping in an American infantry regiment and or complementing Stotzenberg and allow USAFFE control of two American combat teams. These plans also involved the formation of four tactical commands, each of core strength, along with various additional support units. By November the War Department had approved additional reinforcements of 1,312 officers, 25 nurses and 18,047 men. The 34th Infantry Regiment was scheduled to ship out from San Francisco on 8 December 1941. By 5 December 55 ships were en route from San Francisco carrying 100,000 ship tons of cargo to the Philippines. On board were the personnel and equipment of the 26th Field Artillery Brigade, including the 147th Field Artillery, 75mm, truck-drawn, Regiment of the South Dakota National Guard, the 148th Field Artillery, 75mm, truck-drawn, Regiment of the Idaho National Guard and the 2nd Battalion of the 131st Field Artillery, 75mm, truck-drawn, Regiment of the Texas National Guard. These units were diverted to Hawaii and assigned to its defenses. When the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor took place, there were several air elements en route. This included 52 A-24 Banshee dive bombers of the 27th Bombardment Group, 18 P-40s of the 35th Pursuit Group, 340 tons of bombs and 9,000 drums of aviation fuel. There were also two light field ground echelons of the 7th Bombardment Group, which arrived in the Philippines and were relocated to Marivelles after the evacuation of Manila. 
The Air Echelon Squadrons of the 7th were en route to the Philippines and arrived in Pearl Harbor on the morning of 7 December 1941. They consisted of 9th, 463rd, 492nd, and 493d heavy bombardment squadrons. The Air Echelon was diverted back to the U.S. and then routed to Java through Australia. Materiel and training deficiencies The Philippine Army received clothing that was of poor quality. Their rubber shoes would wear out within two weeks. There were shortages of nearly every kind of equipment such as blankets, mosquito bars, shelter halves, entrenching tools, gas masks, and helmets. During August, MacArthur had requested 84,500 M1 Garand rifles, 330.30 caliber machine guns, 326.50 caliber machine guns, 450.37 mm guns, 217.81 mm mortars, 288.75 mm guns, and over 8,000 vehicles. On 18 September, he was informed that, because of lend lease commitments, he would not receive most of these items. As a result, the Philippine Army was forced to continue using the old Enfield and Springfield rifles. The shipment of supplies depended upon the U.S. Navy's limited cargo capacity. In September, the Navy announced its intentions to convert three transports into escort carriers, but this was not done after MacArthur observed that the loss of three transports would delay his reinforcements by more than two months. The Army then approved requests for 105 mm howitzers, 75 mm pack howitzers, 75 mm guns, .30 caliber machine guns, 37 mm guns, 10 250 feet station hospitals, 180 sets of regimental infirmary equipment, jeeps, ambulances, trucks and sedans. By November, there were 1,100,000 tons of equipment, intended for the Philippines, piled up in U.S. ports. Most of this never reached its destination. Meanwhile, the Navy did manage to transport 1 million gallons of gasoline to the island. Much of this fuel would be stored on the Bataan Peninsula. In 1941, many Filipino units went into battle without ever having fired their weapons. Many of the troops had also never even seen an artillery piece fired. The 31st Infantry Division PA, signal officer was unable to establish radio communication with other units in the same camp. The commander of the Philippine 31st Infantry Division, Colonel Blumel stated, The enlisted men are proficient in only two things, one, when an officer appears, to yell, attention, in a loud voice, jump up, and salute, two, to demand three meals per day. Training and coordination were further complicated by language barriers. Enlisted Filipinos often spoke one language, such as Bacol or a Visayan language, their officers would speak another, such as Tagalog, and the Americans would speak English. There were some first sergeants and company clerks who could neither read nor write. The Japanese decide to attack. The Japanese viewed all the lands of Asia to be the rightful property of the Imperial Japanese government and the Emperor. The seizures of Korea, China and parts of Russia, which had begun at the turn of the 20th century, had been taking an upswing. The Japanese had been kept from realizing their goal of unifying or dominating the Asian lands by the presence of foreign military forces in the Philippines, United States, Hong Kong, Malaysia, United Kingdom, and the Dutch East Indies. Japan had hoped that they could strike fast and hold off reinforcements long enough to broker a peace accord from a position of strength. Central to the Japanese goals was the taking of all Asian lands. To be successful US, UK, and Dutch forces were to be attacked simultaneously to prevent their ability to reinforce and aid their Asian possessions. Pivotal to the Japanese decision to attack was a tremendous need for crude oil as a result of economic sanctions imposed by the United States, the United Kingdom and the Netherlands which was weakening the Japanese economy. The Japanese leaders were faced with a choice, end the war in China and their plans for Asian conquest, so as to end the sanctions, or declare war on three large military forces. The current war against Britain, and the Netherlands, and the strain of providing aid by the United States to these countries was seen as an opportunity by the Japanese to extend their rightful place as a ruler in Asia. The Japanese government decided to seize resources under the control of Britain, the United States and the Netherlands. Japan had already placed over 10 divisions in Formosa, Taiwan. 
Japanese military planners argued that the British, and the USSR should they decide to declare war, would be unable to effectively respond to a Japanese attack, given the threat posed by the Third Reich. List of conflicts Battle of the Philippines 1941-42, the 8th of December 1941 to the 8th of May 1942. Battle of Bataan the 7th of January to the 9th of April 1942. Battle of Corregidor 5 to 6 May 1942. Japanese occupation of the Philippines 1941 to 1945 the 8th of May 1942 to the 5th of July 1945 Philippine resistance against Japan 1941 to 45 Battle of Leyte the 17th of October to the 26th of December 1944 Philippines Campaign 1944-45 the 20th of October 1944 to the 15th of August 1945 Battle of Leyte Gulf 23 to 26 October 1944 Battle of Ormoc Bay the 11th of November to the 21st of December 1944 Battle of Mindoro 13 to 16 December 1944 Battle of Kerang Pass 1945 Battle of Maguindano January to September 1945 Invasion of Lingayan Gulf 6 to 9 January 1945 Battle of Luzon the 9th of January to the 15th of August 1945 Battle of Besang Pass the 9th of January 1945 Raid at Cabanatuan the 30th of January 1945 Battle of Bataan 194531 January 1945 Battle of Manila 19453 February the 3rd of March 1945 Battle of Corregidor 194516 February 1945 Battle of Baguio 194521 February 1945 Raid at Los Baños the 23rd of February 1945 Invasion of Palawan the 28th of February to the 22nd of April 1945 Battle of Mindanao the 10th of March to the 15th of August 1945 Battle of the Visayas the 18th of March to the 30th of July 1945 Battle at Piso Point the 14th of May 1945 See also General Alfredo M Santos Bataan Death March Cesar Basip Comfort Women Commonwealth of the Philippines Douglas MacArthur Harbor Defenses of Manila and Subic Bays Peru Onoder Hukbalahap Jesus A. Villamor Jose P. Laurel Manuel L. Quezon Military History of Japan during World War II Military History of the Philippines Military History of the United States Nichols Field Nielsen Field Offshore Patrol Philippine Commonwealth Army Philippine Army Air Corps Philippine Department Philippine Division Roy Anthony Cutter and Bennett Second Philippine Republic Sergio Osmeña The Great Raid U.S. Army Forces Far East 24th Corps United States Wendell Fertig Yamashita Tamayuki Notes
References Agoncillo, Teodoro A. 1990, History of the Filipino People, 8th ed., self-published, ISBN 971-8711-06-6 Catlett, George, ed., 1947, The War Reports of General of the Army George C. Marshall, Chief of Staff, General of the Army H. H. Arnold, Commanding General, Army Air Forces, and Fleet Admiral Ernest J. King, Commander-in-Chief, United States Fleet and Chief of Naval Operations, General of the Army H. H. Arnold, and Lippincott. External links Statement of Ronald R. Almond, Deputy Undersecretary for Benefits, Department of Veterans Affairs, before the House Committee on Veterans Affairs, United States Department of Veterans Affairs, 15 February 2007, retrieved 22 May 2008. World War II in the Philippines. Official Gazette, gov.ph. Retrieved 9 April 2012.